Welcome to another week of tier list where we're almost the finales, right? But not every anime has ended. So here's what I'm going to do. This week is probably the cutoff for like, I guess, quote unquote, finales or whatnot. And even, I know Mushoku Tensei hasn't had its finale, Kaiju it and whatnot. But like, it's hard to accommodate every series because fucking scheduling and stuff. So we're going to do one more regular tier list. Then next week, I will do one final tier list just judging how I felt about the whole season of anime itself. But right now, again, this is the most recent episode. And we start with Kaiju Wake goes to peak. Yep, no, don't even need to say anything about it. Don't, don't even need to say anything more about Kaiju Wake. Kaiju Wake has been delivering every episode. There has never been an episode where I felt like it was just trudging along or I wasn't engaged. Every part of Kaiju Wake I have... I was amazed by the animation quality is fucking crazy. The fights are insane. The sounds, the soundtracks are amazing. I, I, I love Kaiju 8. I don't know. I, I just, there's nothing bad to say about Kaiju 8 from my perspective. And if there was, it's probably going to be like very trivial. It's easy peak. Windbreaker. I think that is suffering right now because of the content that we're covering. It's not the most exciting arc, right? It's not the most exciting arc. We're just kind of like winding down and meeting new friends and, you know, trying to see who the group captain's going to be. And next episode, we're going to meet the rest of the both you know, the top boys. So that's going to be interesting. But for what it was, I thought it was like an overall just chill, good episode. Doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean it's great. It's just good. New gate? Hmm. New gate. I feel like I should put it in mid, but I'll put it in good. It was... The fights were... The fights were extremely mid. But these are, this is not to like judge animation. This is like how I felt about the show watching it. Just my overall like fun watching it. The stuff with Princess Rion is kind of fun. Uh, I, the Princess Booba fan service. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm just a DJ and Coomer. You know what? I'll, I'll put it in good here. Good for two O's that matches Rione's titties. Appraisal Isekai has ended and I think that I could put it in the great tier. I thought that the finale episode where we covered the final, you know, um, it's like a, it's not a tag battle, but it was like a team versus team thing, trying to figure out how good Mireille, this alcoholic new girl is, and she delivered, and, you know, there's more setup into season two. Maybe it should be good. Maybe it should be great. I thought it wasn't over, but it was a finale. Uh, uh, was it that great? It was funny. It was funny. I'd be willing to put it in great. I'm gonna put it in great. Maybe it should be a little bit lower, but I thought it was a solid ending. Yozakura was actually also great. Yozakura actually, like, the grandpa, <laughs> slippery grandpa plot, that was, like, kind of fun. It was actually pretty fun. And then there was, you know, like, family shopping where we just blew up the entire mall. For what it was, for what it was worth, the Slice of Life episode, I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was like, a pretty great episode. Tensura. I'm gonna... Oh, I can't be putting... Did I? Because Tens are the yapping. But it was like fun yapping. It was a lot of setup. It was a lot of setup. I think it was great to... I don't think it's peak. I don't think that the yapping was peak for me. It was great though. It was just kind of covering, you know, with our merchant Mjolnir, what are we going to do with the festival and just kind of getting everything set up. The way that the yapping is done is also interesting now. Instead of just like stale people just sitting down in a room and talking, they're suddenly adding like vibrant animations and dynamic like movements. So like even if Mjolnir is there talking and thinking about the Colosseum, we're actually given a visual representation of the Colosseum, right? I actually enjoy that a lot. If they could do that in every yapping episode to keep us, you know, ADHD motherfuckers in line, I thought it'd be a really good thing. So I'm going to put it there. Konosuba, I'm going to put it at peak. Finale of Konosuba, Wedding Crash. But the Wedding Crash wasn't even like the end of it. It was Vanir script, bro. Had it all planned just to rescue Maxwell. What the fuck? What happened? It's like, what? I love that ending. It was a nice episode. And and dad, you know, La Latina's dad, <laughs> she's alive. Aqua's like, yeah, he was a curse. Here we go. Sacred break. And then La Latina, she's now divorced. Wait, it, it's not divorced. It's not divorced, Tina. It's divorcedness. <laughs> I, I kind of feel bad. Kind of feel bad, but maybe she has a... Humiliation shame king for being a widow as well now, but I thought it was a pretty peak episode. Re monster? I put it in great. It was. We didn't even have re monster recently, right? This is still judging the finale. So it's kind of getting carried over, I guess. I'll put it in great. Remember what happened? Uh, Dami got an evolution and turned white. 
And I was like, this shit gotta be fucking racist, man. Uh, there was some different fights going on. More different evolution forms and namings. Gobji died standing. You know, his dick was standing. So, I'll put it in great for Gobji. Uh, Elf Prime also ended last week. I think I put it in great or maybe even peak. But this is relative to the other enemies that aired. Uh, would I put Elf Pride in peak? It was such a wholesome ending, man. It was such a wholesome ending, man. The record player... A little dating, and then the Raphael Butler... Oh, I'm, I'm going to have to put it in peak. It's subject to change. I'm sure if I put it in great before, it's all relative. I don't know. Now that I'm thinking about it more, maybe I'll put it in peak. Now that I think about it more. Demon Slayer. Most recent episode. Great. Muzan walking. Muzan Jackson walking. Muzan Jackson walking for 10 minutes. It was hype. It was it was dummy hype for no reason, bro. Like <laughs> the funniest thing is like they're trying to make these episodes longer. And they made it a 40-minute episode, but like the last 10 minutes was just Muzan walking so slowly with epic animation and like, you know, the soundtrack. <laughs> it was just uh, so many people are probably gonna be memeing on that clip. The Muzan just walking slowly. I'd be comfortable putting it in. Oh, uh, should I put it in peak? You know what? I'm gonna fucking put it in peak for the memes. I'm gonna put it in peak for the memes because they actually fucking put their balls in the floor and was like, you know what? With this extra budget we got left for season four, let's just animate Muzan walking for 10 minutes. Fuck it. Do it. And you're like, you bet. And then they flexed on us. You know what? Even though it probably doesn't deserve peak objectively, I thought it was hilarious. I'm gonna put it in peak. Mao, I don't even know what's happening right now. This went in fucking hiatus. It, it, it's having a break. This shit's gonna be carried over into fucking next season of anime. What's up with the fucking scheduling? All I remember is the Ku Iku stuff. Maybe it was peak. Maybe it was great. I'm gonna put it in great for now. Date alive. Date alive. Most recent episode was Kurumi clutching new form, as well as a kiss. D did we kiss again? We did. We did, right? What happened? Kurumi. Different form. And now, it's, it's, yeah, we're on a beach right now. We're on like a different domain. Kurumi clutching alone, I think I put it in peak. Kurumi clutching, I put it in peak. Double form. The, fuck that, the fact that she can just like, she's not purifying the Sephora. It's more like reverting it back to the, you know, old state. So it's more like regression. But like, I thought, I, I thought it was crazy. Kurumi, you know, fucking lore. No, not, not Kurumi lore. I mean like Kurumi mechanics. Kurumi clutching. You know, dual wielding spirits, and then like a double double date with ourselves. I'm gonna put it in peak for now. Second spirit of origin. That's right. Westcott's about to pop off. Danna sama. I love the finale. I love the finale. I love everything about this anime. It can get hype when it needs to, but it focuses on the slice of life moments. I am pleasantly happy about how this show I had no expectations of in season one. Sorry, in episode one. And then it blew me out of the water in season, you know, episode two with Fenry's fan service. And then every after, every episode after that compounded, focusing on the different characters and doing more slice of life and not taking it seriously. And the dumb, you know, fake hero doing dumb shit. You know, it was very fun overall. I'd be willing to put it in peak. And season two is kind of teased. Seventh Prince, no need to say, just put it in peak. Dragon Ball Z ass fight. Well, the finale itself was... Mostly, like, the first half was covering, like, it, basically, it was just him going poof. It was Lloyd Experimentations and, you know, overall, the wrap-up. Uh, Jade, yeah. Is it peak or great? I think I'll put it in peak for now. I'll just put it in peak because, like, Seventh Prince, has just, it's just been so hype the entire time. Blue Archive also just ended for us. The finale, I don't think I can really compare on the animation quality as these. Like, Blue Archive, it was nice to see everyone come out. It was so cool to see everyone come out and save us. But was it peak? Was it actually peak though? Or was it great? Someone said, nah, this anime mid as fuck. And I was really thinking about that comment. Was the anime mid? If you think about the overall anime, it's definitely not the best anime I've seen. And the arc that it's covering also was apparently one of the weakest, you know, arcs. The animation was pretty decent. The voice acting was great. If I'm going to put Blue Ar if Seven Prince in peak for last week, then I have to play Blue Archive also in peak. Everyone did come out. It was like an Avengers like, you know, thing. And I did enjoy how everyone came back to help out. Mr. Kaiser being stepped on was hilarious too. Yeah, why not? Fuck it, I'll throw it in peak. 
Skimmy Shimulin Fantasy, most recent episode. It was a finale episode. I feel like... Is it peak or great? Last episode. Do you think that it was peak? Think about what happened last episode. It was just yapping and setting up an outro. I think it's great. You guys are throwing peak around too easily. Straight up. We're judging the most recent episode, not the whole series itself. I feel like... There, it's it's all relative, and I, and and Skimishi, obviously the episode before that was peak, but the episode after, the highlight of the episode for me was Sophia and Root's moment. That scene was amazing, and Root's actually so fucked up. But like, you can't just say it's peak because Lucian shit on the chick. That's one moment. If thirty seconds of the entire episode was the only thing you enjoyed, what does that really say about the episode? You're comparing one specific moment versus an entire episode, right? So, like, I'd be willing to put it in gray. I'd be willing to put it in gray. We're thinking about the overall episode, right? And, yeah, it's not, like... Like, it's not fair because it's a wrap-up episode and we're doing outro stuff and all the hype has passed by. It's not Skimichi's fault. It's just the subject of the episode itself was not as, you know, that peak compared to the previous episodes. And I could honestly say the same about Seventh Prince too. then. Well, Seventh Prince... It didn't immediately do that, right? Half of it was, you know, hype, and then the other half was like, you know, shit like that. So, I'll put it there. Mushoku Tensei. <laughs> Dual wielding wives. What do you, what do you, what do you guys think about Mushoku Tensei? I did, was a were a lot of people actually mad. Were a lot of people actually mad about what Roxy was doing? Because like, yes, the title is called, you know, Roxy the Grooming Homewrecker. No one actually thinks that's serious, because obviously I'm saying it, I'm trying to make content out of it. I wonder if people are actually mad about it. I thought the overall episode... We need to watch the cut content. There is missing information that needs to be clarified in order to understand why Roxy had to serve her Kuchi. That part, I don't understand, because it really looks like... Like the timing of it, right? It's just like... Rudy was traumatized. Roxy goes off as her pussy. Now we have a second wife. And it's like, okay... Why does she have to do that? I don't know. It's, it's cut content. We don't we don't really know yet. There, the rationale has yet to been stated. So I'm gonna hold off my judgment for, but you know, but for the actual content, of the episode itself, and how fun it was. Yeah, I had a fucking blast. There's fucking meaning about it. And that's it. This is the final weekly episodes tier list. And I know that some of the animes will be carried over, like Misfit of Dream King Academy, unfortunately. But like. Next week, we're going to do overall the final, final tier list of every anime spring 2024 that we watch and put it on. Not just judging each episode, but overall, that's it for me.